Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Today, Andrew and I are doing another word association. He's going to throw some words at me, and I'm going to have to come up. Ah, ah, ha, 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 ha. That's not how I actually block things. That's how <laughs> I'm going to have to make his words relevant to martial arts and, and build a conversation around it that you will all find interesting. Stick around. You guys loved when we did this the last time. If you're new to the show, welcome. What do we do here? Well, here at Whistlekick, we connect, educate, and entertain. We are passionate martial artists. We are dedicated to the proposition that martial arts makes people better. And our mission is to try to get everybody in the world to train for at least six months. If you want to check out everything we're doing, go to whistlekick.com. You're going to find a store over there. Use the code podcast15, sees you 15%, helps us cover our expenses. And you can walk around with a, with a Whistlekick shirt or Andrew's got a Whistlekick hoodie. There's all kinds of good stuff over there, protective equipment, etc. Now, the show gets its own website, hats, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. We give you every single episode we've ever done. We don't hide anything. We don't take them down. They're not behind a paywall. You always get our best stuff for free. And if you want to go further, you can. For example, on that website, we've got the show notes, transcripts, all kinds of good stuff there. But maybe you like one of the transcripts so much and you think, hey, I'd kind of like to have this and take notes on it in like a book form. We've got a number of our episodes available in paperback book on Amazon, things like that. If you want to support us, you could grab one of those books. You could also submit a guest or a topic suggestion, or you could join our Patreon. Starts as little as $2 a month. You can get in, you get behind the scenes, you get Zoom hangouts, you get all kinds of cool stuff with Patreon, and it goes up from there. And at the upper tiers, we even have a mastermind for martial arts school owners. Our biggest fans go to the family page, whistlekick.com slash family. We update it weekly with stuff you're not going to find anywhere else. So you go check that out. All right, Andrew. Yeah. How's it going, man? This was fun last time we did this. Yeah, it was. I'm glad it went well. And I I reached out on a few different channels, Patreon, et cetera, and said, did you all like this? Did people enjoy this? And overwhelmingly, they said they really did. Yeah, it was neat. And uh, and I did get some, uh, a, a couple of people comment on some uh, some suggestions on words for next time. So, oh, cool. So, yeah. So uh, if you have fun, uh, family friendly, appropriate quest, uh, yeah. things that I can ask Jeremy to relate to martial arts, please uh, feel free to send them to me. Uh, you can reach me at Andrew at WhistlecakeMartialArtsRadio.com. I can make anything about martial arts. Well, we're going to find out. Any, we're going to find out. Anything. Bring it. Okay. Bring it. Uh, so the first one. Are you, oh, sorry. Are you ready? Sure. Okay. Uh, and we never set a time limit for this, but. I think instead of a time limit on it, I think you're you're kind of driving. Like it's whenever you feel it's appropriate to throw the I next throw one another at one at you. Yeah, I don't think it has to. Like last time, I kind of like faded. Yeah, and you waited for. I don't think you have to do. Well, but that. I didn't want to cut you off. And just make me go. Yeah, I don't want to cut it's you like off. Like jazz. Cut me okay. off. Okay, all right. Zip ties. Zip ties. <laughs> well, we could go like the real kind of literal self defense thing. You see, all there are videos all over YouTube of how to get out of zip ties and and you know do do this and it's really easy and it's really not that easy. If you use the cheap zip ties, yeah, you can you can break free of them pretty well but i think there's another way we could come at zip ties what do zip ties do they hold things together zip ties are are ubiquitous in the way that duct tape is maybe not quite as versatile but just as duct tape can hold anything together zip ties can hold just about anything else together and if you have the two by the way everybody should have both in their car but if you have the two you're pretty much good to go and i think there are techniques in martial arts that are kind of like that a jab is kind of the zip ties or the duct tape of martial arts. It can fit in just about anywhere. It can solve just about any martial arts problem. Punch somebody in the face, right? That'll fix almost anything in a self-defense situation if you apply it appropriately. And really easy to use. Gazebo. Ooh. Gazebo, those little kind of shed without the walls Outdoor. sort of yep. thing. They're always round or hexagonal or octagonal. Um, that's a challenging one. 
but it leads to a story. So growing up in my little town, the owners of the martial arts school lived two doors down from Casco Day Park, which was where we did the big fire uh, fire department fundraiser every year. And then two doors down from that was the community center where we had classes for a very, very long time. And sometimes we had classes at their house. So like in the middle of these two martial, like the places I've done the most martial arts was a gazebo. And I spent a lot of time on that gazebo as I finally got to be old enough sitting there after, you know, old enough that I, my mother would let me go hang out outside during the adult class, but not so old that it, you know, it was inappropriate for me to do so. Like I should have been in class, you know, kind of like that 11 year old, 10, 11, 12 year old space. And I remember sitting, I remember when they got the gazebo and it was such a big deal because I'd never seen one before. It had stairs and you just kind of sit there and there were these big uh, cross members and just trying to do pull-ups on them and everything. And it was just, it, it was, it was fun. And because it's a space that's just so like that whole strip to me is martial arts. I've, I've done martial arts on that green. I've done martial arts in those parking lots. Um, a few years ago, I even taught back on that green for the first time in like 20 years, you know, it's, it's a little, a lot of fun. Whiteout. What does whiteout do? It keeps you, it, it corrects your mistakes. And there is no whiteout in martial arts. You can't, if you do something wrong, you can't undo it. But I think the, the benefit to that is you have to learn from your mistakes. If you can easily apply whiteout, does it really teach you to be a better writer? to be more careful with your words, to make sure you're spelling things correctly. Back when I, fir when I first started writing and I had to type on a typewriter, which I absolutely hated, or write a piece of paper, I remember, and you might remember this too, Andrew, you get to a point you're like, I'm not 100% sure how to spell this word and I don't wanna do this whole page over again. And you'd go and you'd look it up in the dictionary and have to do that. And so it forced you to be diligent and, and attentive to what you were doing in the same way that I think a lot of us even get paralyzed from in our martial arts, whether it's self-defense or it's sparring, because there's no take backs, there's no mulligans. We can't just say, oh, that's not quite what I meant to do. Whoops, backspace, backspace, backspace. Ha ha, you didn't see that. No, you get popped in the face when you do something wrong or you hurt somebody or you hurt yourself. And because there are consequences, I think it, matters more name badge sorry name badge name badge like a permanent one or like a like a temporary like a one? like a permanent one like a permanent yeah. one. Oh, where is it like this one yeah or i got one here as well like like this one like this one yep it's funny they're both silver with rounded no nope, mine's white um they're official right it's something that when i go to martial arts events if i if i'm i, I don't do this much anymore but back when I, I really thought the way forward for whistle kick was pitching and trying to get people to invest in the company i was constantly wearing this name badge uh some of you have seen the red polo shirt that i still wear from time to time and that's what i would wear this with generally but what what is it about a name badge that makes it a value you can't just people don't just come up with them, right? Like you can't go to the store and buy a hundred adhesive name tags to put on anybody's shirt and you write on it with a Sharpie. This required planning. He, everybody did drop that it. required planning <laughs> and intent, forethought, right? And the best things that we have, the things we tend to find the most valuable do require that because it shows a commitment. If I show up to a competition and my uniform is clean and pressed and I'm rested and I've clearly practiced my form, it's going to come out better. You can tell, you can feel it. We're recording this a day after Thanksgiving. There were likely some dishes that were prepared a few days in advance. People put a lot of thought, a lot of preparation into them. And those likely came out better than the ones that people woke up the day of and went, Oh, I got to bring something. Uh, what's in the fridge? I'm just going to haphazardly put something together. 
we value things that require time and planning is relevant time in our martial arts our skills the presentation of our skills the application of our skills requires time and when time goes in it is of more value and andrew just walked away kilt it's a hakama next no not quite <laughs> all right um a kilt see i don't know the history of kilts well enough to to draw the connection to like the kind of combative lin cultural elements but in my ex understanding it's really only been in in what i would call more modern times that we have looked at any kind of skirt as being an exclusively feminine thing if you look at a lot of traditional dress in a lot of cultures it, it's kind of a skirt because it's a lot easier to make a skirt than pants pants are warmer it's cold out i'm not going to wear a skirt i don't own any skirts but I, I think that there's something there that's kind of i think primal is probably the best word that it just it's because it's so simple it ties us back now i don't know what you feel when you wear a kilt i've never worn a kilt but i think that they're kind of cool they're kind of I, I think a lot of guys secretly look at them and go you know that's kind of it's kind of cool it's kind of badass to wear a kilt and know that you know I, I i know that in the traditional garb there's like a knife and i think you even have one of those knives like we've talked about that a few times you know there's a knife like there's there's a lot of tradition to it in the same way that a gi or a dobak or a kama also has tradition and i think I, I would state just because i know a little bit more about about it the the yeah. kilt is obviously related to the bagpipe right bagpipes scotland kilts scotland uh, the bagpipe was has been the only instrument that was declared an instrument of war. Mm -hmm. So there you go. All right, gargoyles. Gargoyles. They're scary. And they're on churches and old buildings. And what's the whole purpose? The whole purpose is to be scary and to remind people of being scary. And the best defense as a martial, as anybody, is to not seem unscary i'm not saying everybody has to walk around and be scary or all the time but if you look like a victim if you act like a victim you are statistically more likely to be a victim so i think there's a lesson we can take from gargoyles in being maybe not scary but not unscary think of the japanese samurai mempos same sort of thing mm. how about change pocket change coins coins um, I know Josh Blum is fond of, of coins as a deterrent or a weapon. He's brought that up a few times. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of a neat idea, the idea of throwing coins. Um, but change, you can't have growth without change. Oh. And obviously that's a different way of using the word change. And, uh, but it's been one of my mantras for a very long time there are a lot of people who want to grow and become better but they're not willing to let anything go they're not willing to change you can't grow without change you cannot become a better martial artist without someone guiding you if it's if you're guiding yourself you've already gone as far as you can go maybe there are some physical skills you could refine but i don't think that makes you a dramatically better martial artist postage stamp you're just looking around the room. I love no, it. some of them I am, but some of them I'm not. I'm like thinking of things that would what's, be difficult. What's the job of a postage stamp? It is the final thing you do to commit an action to send information to somebody else. It is the thing that you say, you know what? This is done. It's ready to go. It is stamped and ready for delivery. And then it goes out the door. Up until that point, you could change it all. You could rewrite it. You could reprint it, whatever. You could use a different envelope. You have infinite choice up until the point that that stamp goes on it and it goes out the door. Once it gets into the mailbox, you're done. In fact, we, we see sitcoms that make a bit out of that and someone ends up getting arrested or stuck in the, the mailbox on the street. And there are so many things that we can look at in our training that are like that. 
I brought up the example of, of uh, uh, competing, presenting a forum for competition. I can practice that a thousand different ways. I can come up with, okay, how do I want my timing to be here? Do I want to do this movement like this or do I want it like this? Where am I breathing? I have all kinds of time. But when I go to the competition, when they call my name, that's me putting a stamp on it. It's ready to go. Whether or not it's ready to go, it's <laughs> going to go. And sometimes you just have to say, you know what? It's good enough and let's see how it Fire goes. Fire extinguisher. Out. An underrated self-defense tool. Mm. Um, because I broadly define self-defense as things that can hurt you, like fire. Most people do not know where their smoke or their fire extinguishers are. If they do, they're not easy to get to. And it is entirely possible that you have one, it's 20 years old, you've never looked at the charge indicator, and that's a problem. I have one in my car, and I have one two i think one in the garage maybe two in the garage um there's at least one in the house i have a small house they're all over the place you can get a decent fire extinguisher for relatively little money and if you need to you can bludgeon someone in the head with it by the way uh there are different ones for cars you should have one everyone should have one it's like 20 30 bucks um it's probably not going to save your life but it could very well save someone else gorilla glue Gorilla glue. Don't put it in your hair. <laughs> Not a problem for me. Not a problem for me either. Um, was a problem for one person who thought it would be fine. We use Gorilla glue in the same way that we use zip ties or duct tape, right? Like it, it's the reason Gorilla glue is something that most of us know of, despite being a brand, is because it does what it does really, really well. That original iteration of, of Gorilla glue was like a better super glue it came out and it's just like bam it was less messy didn't come in the little tubes right like it, it was a very versatile product and i think that we as martial artists we have some of those very versatile things but we get bored with them i was listening to an audiobook that had nothing to do with martial arts the other day and they were actually talking through a session where someone was training other people in self-defense. And it was really interesting because one of the main characters speaks up and says, we've been doing this for hours. I'm really bored. Mm. Can't we learn something new? And what ends up happening is the person teaching demonstrates, like rushes them and gets them to a point where the student applies the techniques without having to think about it in, uh, um, you know, a semi-real environment. And I think that that's something that we often forget, that most of what we need to learn as martial artists, we learn in the first six months. We don't need to learn other stuff. It's only a few punches and a few kicks and a few blocks that you need. And honestly, most of us end up blocking completely different anyway, because those blocks are not really blocks, as you demonstrated recently and as most of us know. But it's because of a, a bit of boredom that we forget how versatile a sidekick is or an elbow can be those are the gorilla how about a necktie i like neckties i always struggle to tie them well because i'm short and they tend to come in one length and if i tie them wrong it ends up one ends down to my knees <laughs> um it doesn't work well but i like dressing up and i think a necktie like a belt is incredibly versatile as an impromptu self-defense weapon. You know, if you probably a little bit harder to deploy than a belt, but you could still use it. You know, you could garrot somebody if they're trying to murder you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Andrew's demonstrating being choked to death with a necktie. But I think more than that, a necktie brings an outfit together. If you wear a nice shirt and a jacket and no tie you can do that and in fact there are you know that's considered fashionable in some ways but it doesn't look right to me if somebody was wearing a jacket or a vest i don't want to see buttons it looks funny to me and we have things like that in martial arts like it just it's expected it just kind of goes along with these other things there are techniques and, and it's different for different people depending on the style there are techniques that if you throw a b c you're probably going to throw d 
that that next technique there tends to be something that follows along in an exchange which is both really good because it means you've practiced in that way but it might also not be great because it could mean that your autopilot could take you in the wrong direction stuffed animals stuffed animals i used to beat up stuffed animals when i was a kid remember i started when i was four and so i had stuffed animals that were my size and i would set them up and i would punch them and i would kick them and I'm, I'm demonstrating as if I actually knew what I was doing back then. <laughs> and I was not throwing solid uppercuts or, or, or hook punches or back fists or anything. You know, I was lucky to not fall over when I was four. And those were fun times, right? Impromptu training on random inanimate objects. It's something I think a lot of us do. And you've probably seen, you know, like at fairs, you can win that like massive stuffed bear. That's the only thing I see, I could see value in that for either, either, you know, punching it or practicing grappling maneuvers way cheaper than one of those grappling dummies. Yeah. Good point. I mean, if you, if you want to grapple at home with something, you know, get a really large stuffed bear, it's going to cost you way less money. Birth certificate. Birth certificate, certificates. I wish martial arts schools made a bigger deal out of when people started in the anniversaries that come following. Hmm. How many people have been training decades and they don't know the exact day they started, yes. but they can easily go back and say, I started school on this day. I started college on this day. I was born on this day. I started this job on this day. There are records for that, but most of us don't know. I've got it down to like one of two days. It was September 6th or 8th, 1983. I know that. But I, I don't know how I would be able to verify one or the mm. other. I might be able to go back and through conversation and looking at old calendars, figure it out. But I'm really unsure. And the only reason I know that is because I was so close to two years for my yellow belt. Like it was, I was six when I earned my yellow belt. And it was right around that same time. And so I just remember that being discussed, like that it was so close to that. But I, I wish I wish we had martial arts birth certificates in a sense because I think it's worth celebrating. Hmm. All right, I got one more. Okay. Hot pockets. Hot pockets. Caliente pocket. <laughs> <laughs> the Jim Gaffigan bit, if, if anyone doesn't know. Uh, I'm trying to find a, a delicate way of saying this. Um. Where I'm trying to go, and I, I don't think I can get there respectfully, is that such and such is the hot pockets of martial arts, mm. right? But but what what are hot pockets? They're they're tasty, relatively inexpensive. They're not good for you, but they feel good in the moment, right? Uh, and so rather than disparage an art or a style of training or anything like that, I would say it's hot pockets are the emotion of sparring of martial arts right the moment emotion creeps in it can feel good at the moment right and that could be pride because you just applied a technique really well and you're feeling good about yourself and then you get punched in the face it could be anger because someone you felt was being disrespectful they hit you harder than you wanted you get angry you lash out and then somebody hits hits you in the face right emotion is something that is really natural for us but it doesn't serve us when we spar it's really cheap and easy to bring in and there are some people who think that it's a good idea oh well if you're in a fight you know you just get really angry and then you just rah and you, you just you get it done just as there are some people who think you know what it's fine i can eat a hot pocket for lunch every day but you shouldn't it does it's not actually in your best interest Awesome. Good job. That was fun. Thanks, man. I like those. They're challenging. They make me think. So if you have ideas for words that you want to throw at me in a future version of this, send them to Andrew, Andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Don't send them to me because I don't, I don't want to know them ahead of time. That's half the fun of this. And what else? Anything else along those lines before we close? No, I mean, they can also send me a... Uh... Q and A questions as well, like more in yeah, depth questions. questions we're, gonna, we're gonna do a Q and A in a moment here. We're gonna record it live and publicly. 
and everyone can can be there uh, so that'll be fun and if you want to know more about the show go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com you can subscribe to our newsletter we only send out relevant stuff it's not just like hey we haven't sent you an email in a week so we're going to send you stuff anyway right now we're recording this towards the end of the year so there's a little more going on so we're sending out emails a little more but through the summer is a little less you know we just we try to be uh, respectful of your time and of your email address we never sell it or anything like that you can also leave us a tip a donation if you will over at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com people do that once in a while most people go the patreon route you can have a recurring thing there, but if you don't want to do that, if you're really just like, you know what, I loved this episode or that episode, or this really means a lot to me, and you just want a one and done, that's why we set that up over there. It's uh, through PayPal. And, you know, if you have a martial arts school, we have a, let's call it a zero obligation look at our consulting services. It's something that is becoming more important for us. We're getting more and more questions, and we for those who want to go deeper, we can we can help you with that. We've we've had great results with the clients we've worked with. We will continue to work with those clients and new clients. And hey, if we can help martial arts schools grow, it is in our best interest. Remember, what's our mission? To get everyone to train. So if we can help schools grow, that furthers our mission. If you want to bring me in for a seminar, we can do that. Reach out, Jeremy at whistlekick.com. Our social media is at Whistlekick everywhere you could imagine. And that brings us to a close. Until next time. Train hard. Train hard. Smile. Smile. Have a great day. And have a great day.